Hello, thanks so much for joining us today for our 40 top virtual interview series. My name is Brittany Bruce and I'm special projects coordinator with the Marsh University Research Corporation, as well as logistics coordinator for the Alliance for the Economic Development of Southern West Virginia. Today we will be interviewing LaDonna Walker and Dr. Georgiana Logan with Minority Health Institute. The Minority Health Institute was one of this year's 2021 Power of Performance honorees. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Alliance, about the Power of Performance Award, and about our Small Communities Big Solutions Conference today. So let me go ahead and get started by sharing a little bit more about what the Alliance is. The Alliance is an education collaborative that is made up of 10 higher education institutions in Southern West Virginia. Um, listed on the screen are the institutions that make up the Alliance. So if you look at a map, the Alliance covers Mason, Webster, Clay County down, um, and we have a 21 county footprint and represent 30,000 students. The Alliance is really project based results driven. And one of our projects is this 40 top virtual series, and we started this series um, last year during COVID as a way to continue to connect our residents directly with West Virginia experts and state leaders. And since the beginning of this series uh, last April, we've had more than 2,800 West Virginians participate in over 20 plus segments from food supply chain, education, caregiver resources, workforce barriers, and many more. This series has featured over 55 West Virginia experts in both roundtable and interview, and interview uh, sessions. And if you miss one of our sessions, you can head over to our website at marshall.edu slash AEDSWV to explore topics that might interest you. And if there's a topic that you would like to see in a future um, 40 top um, session, please email us at wvsolutions at marshall.edu. We'd love to hear any ideas for topics that you may have. And here's a few more projects um, of the Alliance. So we have our 40 top virtual series. We have our Small Communities Big Solutions uh, Conference, as well as our Power of Performance Awards that I'll talk a little bit more about here in a minute. Um, then we also have um, our West Virginia Solution Seekers Student Leadership Conference. And this was, um, 2020 was our first year for this conference, and we had a um, overwhelming turnout um, of students, um, high school, junior, seniors, college and training students, come and participate in this one day virtual conference. Um, and we were excited to be able to give out four $250, $250 scholarships um, to students who are really um, rising leaders in our state. And then we also have four working groups within the Alliance. We have entrepreneurship, tourism, workforce, and um, addiction um, and recovery. And within the addiction recovery, we have our West Virginia Collegiate Recovery Network, which is actively on seven campuses and universities in Southern West Virginia, as well as partners with others, as well as um, our partners, which are throughout the state. The mission of the network is really to provide support services to students, faculty and staff that are in recovery, maybe seeking recovery or just maybe impacted by someone else's use. And then here is our Small Communities Big Solutions Conference, which is a state update and a way to connect West Virginians, celebrate successes, and scale up projects that are really working well in our state. Um, and we actually have a date for our conference this year. It's going to be November 15th through the 18th. Please save the date. Um, you can head over to our website, wbsolutions.net, to learn more about the conference. Um, we hope that you will join us for this um, week long virtual conference. We had such a great turnout last year. Um, we had a great lineup of speakers um, and panelists, and we had just a great time. We played some games um, and we networked with some um, some other uh, others across our state. So please join us for this conference. And then within our conference, we have the um, Power of Performance Award. And so the Alliance, along with Coalfield Development and the Western Community Development Hub, who are our conference host, um, created this award um, at really as a way to highlight those West Virginians who are really driving success in Southern West Virginia. And since our first conference in 2018, 20 individuals, employers, nonprofits, 
organizations and institutions from 14 counties across West Virginia have been recognized for this, um, recognized with this award. And each year we select um, two recipients from each of the following categories. So we have putting people to work, revitalizing communities and changing lives. So I encourage you to nominate someone in your community who may be um, creating positive change. Um, you can head over to our website, wbsolutions.net, to submit a, a nomination today. That process is open to, uh, till September. Um, so please consider nominating someone um, for this recognition. So now we will start our program for today. Um, we have LaDonna La Walker with us today, as well as Dr. Georgiana Logan. They are with the Minority Health Institute, and they will be um, representing uh, uh, Dr. Anthony Wart today. Um, thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you were able to, to be here with us today. Um, let's go ahead and start off just sharing a little bit about yourself. Um, LaDonna, do you want to go first? Sure. So I am LaDonna Walker-Dean. I am the West Virginia Minority Health Coordinator um, for the Marshall University Minority Health Institute. Um, my background is in social work. Um, before taking this role, a Minority Health Coordinator for the state of West Virginia. I was a social worker for over 15 years throughout West Virginia and Kentucky. And thank you once again for inviting us um, to do this interview series. I'm glad to be here. Great, thanks so much. Uh, Dr. Logan? So hello, I am Dr. Georgiana Logan. I'm an assistant professor here at Marshall University in our Department of Health Science, and I'm also an adjunct lecturer in the Department of Public Health. And I've been at Marshall, this is like um, almost, almost three years now. Um, I started in January of 2018, and I've been with the Minority Health Institute since my arrival. Great, thanks so much. Um, would you all like to share a little bit um, about the Minority Health Institute, what you all offer, um, maybe just how you all have had to kind of navigate and pivot um, during COVID? Um, so whoever wants to go right ahead um, and then the other one can follow. I'm sure. I'm being the um, when we when I started, um, Dr. Anthony T. Ward. He is the founder um, and director over at the Minority Health Institute. He started the Minority Health Institute while he was at Bluefield um, State College, and he actually met with the constituents at West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources Bureau for Public Health in Charleston, West Virginia, in 2018. Um, so that position was the West Virginia Office of Minority Health within the Bureau for public health, but they couldn't retain um, qualified staffing. So there was actually two years to where there was no coordinator for the minority health program over the state of West Virginia. Um, so I was not looking for a job, but Dr. Ward um, came and I met with him and he said they were looking for an individual that either had a master's degree in social work and or public health um, and if I wanted to go on the interview so I did and I was hired on um, to serve as the coordinator um, in 2018. Um, and so basically our main goal was to do research, health promotions um, throughout the state of West Virginia. So as being the coordinator and Dr. Ward being the, the founder and director, there was only two people basically that started in 2018. And so the goal was basically to get partnerships, collaborations, because I can't be at 55 counties all at once. And so basically that's what we've been doing um, for the past three years is to do partnerships and collaborations. We have over 20 partnerships and collaborations throughout the state of West Virginia that focus primarily on health disparities as it relates to minorities. As we all know, I'm from West Virginia, born and raised in Huntington. Um, so I am a West Virginian. And so we know um, when it comes to disparities, African-Americans and also low socioeconomic Caucasians we suffer the most when it comes to diabetes, obesity, and things like that. And so we brought along Dr. Logan as a research associate to help with writing grants because we don't get a lot of funding um, coming through the Minority Health Institute. And so currently um, I'm a part of the West Virginia HEAT, which is Health Equity Action Team within the Bureau for Public Health. So we just recently received about $26,000 
And so my goal was to disperse that funding back into minority communities that focus on ethnic and um, racial populations that focus on health disparities as it relates to minorities. And so we were able to give out 10 grants um, to those different racial and ethnic um, organizations. Sisters of St. Joseph, they actually partnered with us and they actually matched that $26,000. So those are some of the things um, that, that we do to give back to the community so health disparities can continue to be maintained, but eventually one day be eradicated. So basically that is, you know, basically, you know, what I do in a nutshell. Um, and so we've done a whole lot of other partnerships and collaborations and programs. We can get into more of that later, but that's just kind of, to sum it up, that's kind of some of the things um, that we do and in the Institute. That's so that's great. So great. And I know that you all um, actually won the award in the changing life category um, really for, you know, helping West Virginia, you mentioned, lead a more productive and healthier life. Um, yeah. So the work that you all do is super important and, and so needed, like you mentioned. Um, so, so thank you all for that. Well, I'll, yeah, I would say I'm proud of all of our projects. And I say that because when you talk about addressing health and health disparities, these things are complex and multi tier And so each program kind of connects and supports the other program in some way, right? They're not just separate programs, even though we may be doing them in different communities. Everything goes together. And so I can't really place value on one program mm -hmm. or another because every program that we do, at least we think, is very much needed and very successful and very warranted in the communities that we're in. Yeah, that's great. That's a great point. Um, LaDonna, is there anything else you'd like to add for any any kind of program or service that you'd like to highlight? You don't know, no, just a lot of services that we did. We were awarded $25,000 for the Bridge um, Grant Award, which is bridging um, and basically closing gaps into minority um, populations and focusing on different um, areas of, of disease that affect minorities in West Virginia. We did the Community Garden Initiative, which basically, as we know, in West Virginia, we don't have a lot of healthy um, farmers markets with, with fresh fruit and vegetables in minority communities. So that's another highlight of our program. I'm bringing in community gardens so we could actually grow healthy foods in the communities where obesity is plaguing African-Americans and minorities at a high rate. And so basically, if we if there's no um, grocery stores in the community, how can we bring um, healthy foods into the community? So that's another initiative um, that we're just starting to still get that up and running and hopefully one day it'll be huge and big and people can actually come and get healthy vegetables um, and fruit for a wholesale price. You, you go around to places like Chicago, even in a mission, can you see those community gardens just flourishing? And it's a really a beautiful thing. Um, so um, the National Diabetes Prevention Program that we did when we first started out was is awesome. Um, type which focused on type two diabetes because type two, as we know, is a preventable disease, right? So basically, it's killing African American males at a large rate in West Virginia. So therefore, we did a workshop around that. We did education around that. So that was good. Dr. Logan, to pick it back off for her, the one thing that I'm most proud of is the Minority Health Fair. Um, that is yearly. And so we started that basically when I first started to basically bridge the gap between students and the community across the state of West Virginia. And so we had vendors, over 20 plus vendors our first year. Then the second year COVID hit. So what did we think we were going to do? I didn't want to have the, the drive, the, the, the fair. So we actually came up with the drive through fair and we had over 17 vendors. We went into the heart of the community in Huntington and we did um, free flu vaccinations that the cabinet Huntington Health Department partnered with that, um, with giving free COVID testing. This was before the vaccinations um, came about. So Walgreens partnered with us again for a second year. We're doing um, free flu vaccinations. And so basically just doing, continuing doing health promotions in the community by going out in the community. And so basically that is something that I'm most proud of is basically being grassroots, going out to the community and meeting the community where they're at. And so that's basically what the Institute is all about is meeting people where they're at. Great. And then I also like to you know, with my role at the Minority Health Institute, so with me being a research associate, 
I primarily serve as either a co-PI or health education specialist when we write our grants. And so I'm really charged with designing those workshops that we deliver into those communities, whether we're talking about hypertension, diabetes, or cancer, right? The curriculum is really developed by myself alongside with oversight from LaDonna and Dr. Ward. And so it gives us the opportunity to be creative and address things such as culture or social determinants of health and political determinants of health that really impact communities in West Virginia, right? LaDonna oversees 55 counties, which is all of them in West Virginia. And so each community is a little bit different, even though they may share similar, you know, um, um, things in common. And so we really have to keep in mind that when we create our programs, we have to create a program that's specifically designed for that community at that point in time around the issues that that community is facing. And so for me as the health education specialist, that's fun for me, right? So I get to really learn these community members and find out what they feel is needed and then go from there. That's so great. Thank you all so much for sharing that. And there's no denying that you all have a huge passion for this area. Just listening to you ladies speak about this topic, it's just so wonderful. And and also congratulations. I saw that you all were both awarded the 2020, 2021 Marsh University Diversity Award. So that's awesome. Congrats on that. Saw that come through. So just wanted to give you all a shout out there. Um, so what like when you think about the minority health in the next five years moving forward, what do you all want to see um, for the future of the Minority Health Institute? Well, I know Dr. Logan and, and I, we've talked about this. You know, we want my office is the institute, one office on campus of Marsh University. And so we want to see the Institute grow outside of that one office. You know, we want to see a payroll. We want to see people that want to come and have the same passion that Dr. Logan and Dr. Ward and I both have regarding minorities and, and their health. And so basically, you know, we want to have a big, big building that says Marsh University Minority Health Institute, Western Office of Minority Health. Um, so we want to see that grow. We want to see these diseases be eradicated. Um, I know it'll probably be years before all the diseases are eradicated, but hey, it's good to be optimistic. So, um, you know, that's, you know, my goal is, is to make sure the Minority Health Institute is growing, that we are receiving um, funding that comes in the state. I know funding that comes in the state, Minority Health Institute was not receiving funding. So um, I pitched a proposal that, hey, when the state receives funding, this is from federal level as well, that the Minority Health Institute at least receives at least five, one to five percent of that funding because we are addressing minorities in the community. We are a diverse staff. So why should that money not be coming in to the Minority Health Institute when we're actually in, going out in the community and doing things? And so that's another um, couple goals too for more funding to come in so we can be on that platform to receive, you know, millions of dollars that go towards the, that goes towards health disparities and research and health promotion. And just to piggyback off of Madonna, I imagine Minority Health Institute being recognized as one of the greatest entities and assets in the state. And what I mean by that is that the Minority Health Institute is the only Minority Health Institute, not only in the state of West Virginia, but in the tri-state area, right? And so when you think about us overseeing all of these 55 counties, which is but that's a large amount of number for the small amount of staff that we have. I'd like to just see more funding to help support our vision, as LaDonna mentioned, because we know everything takes money, right? If you want to provide resources in the community, you need money to do mm -hmm. it. Now, we can go out here and educate people all day for free, but if we don't have money to buy like diabetic portion plates or blood pressure cuffs or glucometers, we really are putting people at a disadvantage to kind of do some of these self-care practices and management practices. And I think a lot of times when we do receive funding as a state and you hear people mention the term minorities, you know, West Virginia is what? Uh, primarily a Caucasian state, yes. but you can't forget about the black and brown communities that are also here as well. And even in some mm -hmm. of those Caucasian most populated areas, which may be low income and very rural, you oftentimes forget about those individuals too. And so this yep. work is very challenging and it's going to take time, it's going to take resources, and most importantly, it's going to take public health practitioners 
getting out here and doing the work. Um, we have, you know, the Master's Public Health Program here at Marshall. It is an accredited program. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure when these students not only graduate, we want them to stay here in the state and help address some of these health issues that we see in all of these 55 counties. We cannot do that without providing funding for kids to come and get a college education right here in the state of West Virginia. We have so many bright students, right? So we need to get those students in this Masters of Public Health program, and we need to provide funding and resources so that they stay. And that's how you really impact change, right? Mm -hmm. Who better else to take care of the state and the communities and have a passion for it besides the people who already live here and know these areas and know mm -hmm. these people? Thanks so much, Dr. Logan. I really uh, liked that you added keeping our students right here in West Virginia. Um, last year, we had our first ever Solution Seeker Student Leadership Conference that I mentioned, um, and we had over 250 high school juniors, seniors, college, and training students participate to really learn about opportunities and resources available right here in West Virginia. You don't have to leave the state. Um, you can write your story right here in West Virginia. So it was really great that you mentioned that piece. Um, what would you say is your favorite place in West Virginia? I know West Virginia has so many beautiful spots um, and places to visit. Favorite place, basically. West Virginia is a beautiful is a beautiful place. Um, a lot of people don't know the tour the tourism in West Virginia um, and things like that. But my favorite place is is two really. It's Ritter Park in Huntington and the Riverfront. I love those two places. I don't. I've never really took a vacation in West Virginia. Um, and so I, maybe I should start, but you know, those are my two places that I go to when the world seems like it's crashing down on you. Those are, are my serenity places to go. Um, they're two beautiful, um, landmarks in Huntington, um, mm -hmm. Ritter Park and in the riverfront. But those are, those are my two favorite places and basically my parents' house. Because I'm, I'm from here. So, you know, going about being blessed to still have my parents and to be able to go and visit them is really a blessing. Well, I'll definitely say I know my answer will probably shock both of you. Um, but when I think about my favorite place in West Virginia, right? So I'm a Flint, Michigan native by way of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And so again, I've not been in West Virginia that long. However, um, when I connect um, West Virginia to like my work, I think my favorite place for me is my home. And what I mean by that for me, my house is a place of peace and solace. I give so much myself to my students and to my work and we work countless hours right to make these impacts in these communities and so any chance I get to just relax and mentally decompress so we don't have like burnout and you know like reduce stress because we know stress leads to hypertension diabetes all of mm -hmm. those different things I like being at my house and so I'm like I said I'm always out in the community doing something giving them myself and sometimes I think we don't take the the simple things in life, or we take the simple things in life for granted. So for me, anytime I just get to kick back on my couch, watch one of my favorite TV shows, and just kind of like, you know, step away from the world sometimes. That's what my favorite place in West Virginia is. Not to say that we don't have many beautiful places, but yeah. my favorite place is my house. <laughs> Those were some great spots. Thank you for sharing. Ritter Park is amazing, and there is nothing wrong with enjoying some peace and quiet from home. The next question I have, um, you guys are obviously very community-oriented. What would you say community means to you? I think if I had to sum up what community means to me, I think it means interconnectedness. I think it means shared and lived experiences. I think it means a bunch of people and places occupying space. But most importantly, I think community is family. And some we love, some we just like, and others we just put up with like a distant relative. But community <laughs> for me is love. Nice, that's funny. <laughs> um, when I think about community, I think of unity. Um, I think of togetherness um i think of peace a community should be peaceful um it should be safe for your kids and your family to to, to walk around and, and to go anywhere that you choose to go to um that's okay that's what an ideal 
community would look like to me. Um, healthy people, um, healthy places, um, big and small communities, um, just basically unified safe. And so um, basically the community to me um, is basically uni unity, safety, love, happiness, and peace, an ideal community for me. Wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, is there any final thoughts or anything else that you would like to add um, before we wrap up today's interview session? No, just thank you once again for this um, interview. Um, thank you for, you know, basically people didn't really know where is the Marshall University Minority Health Institute or the Western Office of Minority Health? So putting us on the map, you know, and letting us um, talk about um, what's important, you know, to us, you know, is, is a great opportunity to let people know what it is that we have been doing, what it is that we continue to do um, throughout the state of West Virginia, um, and that we are accepting more partnerships and collaborations to fulfill the mission um, of the Institute. Um, and so thank you once again for inviting us um, to do this. I really don't have anything else to say. It's just that, you know, we're going to continue to be optimistic um, and hopefully continue to change lives throughout West Virginia. Well, we appreciate you and all the work the Minority Health Institute is doing um, for communities in West Virginia. And, you know, that's what we want to do with this award, the power of performance. We want to recognize those initiatives, programs, things that are really working well in the state and highlight those. It's not often that we're aware of all of the resources and all of the projects and things throughout our state. So this has been wonderful and we're so glad that you all have been able to join us today, share about the Minority Health Institute, what you all are doing. You all have made great headway. I'm excited to see um, what you all do moving into the future. So that's some And also really quickly, I forgot to add teamwork. You know, teamwork, you know? I love going to work and seeing Dr. Logan. I love going to work and see Dr. Ward. You know, they are both assets that I learn from every day. So I thank those two because, I mean, without having teamwork, the dream work will never be, you know, um, completed. So that's just a blessing to have people that have the same vision, the same passion um, that you have. And they want to see you succeed. And, we, and I want to see them succeed. Well, they've succeeded more than I have. I'm just trying to learn from them each day. So uh, I forgot to add teamwork makes the dream work. Isn't that wonderful? I feel like West Virginia really has this culture of togetherness, sense of community, willing to um, share resources in order, you know, to move the state forward together, together. And I feel like as a young professional, just kind of starting out in my career, I've noticed that everyone is always like in my corner or someone else's corner in order to help move a project or move a program forward. So I think that's really unique. Um, so I'm glad that you mentioned that, LaDonna. Um, Dr. Logan, do you have anything else that you would like to oh, add? Well, I would just like to say thank you again for this opportunity to do the interview. Like LaDonna said, Minority Health Institute has been around for a long time. And sometimes, you know, it's, you know, it's always surprising when people are like, Minority Health Institute, what is that? Mm -hmm. Right? I'm like, because we're out here in the community, we're doing so many different programs without funding most times, right? Mm -hmm. Just so we can make an impact. And so to be have or to have an opportunity to do this interview so more people get to learn about us, hopefully want to collaborate, like LaDonna said, and reach out to us because we do, we enjoy, like LaDonna said, this teamwork. And especially when you're talking about health and making a change for the state, it's going to take a village. And we need the village to rally behind us and get behind these programs and support us in whatever way that may be. So thank you again for this interview. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you both. Like LaDonna said, uh, I enjoy going to work and seeing her and Dr. Ward. I saw all them my partners in crime. <laughs> and so we're just going to keep doing this work, putting on our superhero capes, and, you know, keep going. 
Thanks so much, ladies, for taking the time to chat with me today. There's no denying that you all are true doers in our state, and the Small Communities Big Solutions Conference enjoys honoring those doers in our state um, with our Power of Performance Award, and congratulations on being one of this year's 2021 recipients. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you all at this year's conference. We're having a health-focused day. Um, stay safe, and I'll talk to you ladies soon.